Love is love. Love is love. Ali, no. This is fucking awesome. Okay, cool. Let's see how far we can overclock the 9900K with super chilly water. Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Gigahertz. 2350! <laughs> That's so 2350 at 5.5 gigahertz. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty fucking sweet. Will it do Cinebenchar 20? We're at 56 degrees. Max core temperature 60, 62 degrees at 5.5 gigahertz. The chiller works finally. It works finally. I should have. I, I was just gonna test this, but I really should have uh, insulated some stuff. That's uh, the, the probes in here. So the fluid is currently at minus 14, going through the like the the rubber there that's where it's getting its reading so it's not actually directly touching we're gonna get it's gonna complete 56 that's so awesome <laughs> Eternity later. All right, how's it going, guys? Woo! We got the pumps rolling. We're all settled here. I've been messing with the chiller again, and uh, here, this is uh, how cold it is. Minus twenty seven and that lead is coming out of there with this pump and then if we go in here the chiller works like so good right we have minus 20 well it's almost minus 24 on the uh the fluid temperature like you know ah, you, you see the frost right you see the frost and we see here this is a 9900k 9900k system so what are we talking about today well I wanted to finally put the, the chiller to bed because I've been having just the, it's an awesome concept and the fluid actually now gets down to minus 30 if I let it run for like an hour uh, without cycling something that's heating it up. I mean, it really, really works. And uh, my biggest problem with this whole thing has mostly been thermal transfer. I've always been meaning to actually put this on Ryzen because Ryzen soldered. But then I finally got a 9900K. Although the motherboard I got with it is a gigabyte, uh, what is it? The uh, Z390 Aorus Elite, which is um, mid-range you know, at best for Z390. It doesn't have any like, uh, you know, extreme overclock settings or postcodes. You know, there's a couple of lights that light up on it, but it doesn't have the things you'd really want for extreme overclocking, unfortunately. But uh, we had some success initially, right at the beginning of this, and I should have been filming. Well, you know, I'd love to have showed you uh, you know, the, the in progress, it working well, uh, but it seems like I can't even get the highest I could get then uh, to work again, even though I'm pretty sure the fluid's colder. So I should turn this off, actually. 
Uh, need to disassemble this. I have a meeting. That's why we're going to just quit this. I uh, got some stuff to do. Sorry the videos have been less uh, frequent. I'm going to work on that this week. I've just been really busy with some other stuff. Get it, Morty. Get your tail. Hey, what's that? What's that? Get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got a new puppy, got a business outside of this, got some things and stuff I've got to be doing. So anyways, 5.5 gigahertz at 1.5 volts, which was, that's really low for 5.5 gigahertz, I think, uh, on the 9900K. And uh, we were hitting like 65-ish during Cinebench load, over 2300 in Cinebench R15. Really good scores for, uh, you know, 5.5 gigahertz. That's uh, I'm able to get this actually at 5.3 gigahertz with a normal AIO cooler. So we're only getting 200 megahertz over with this system. So that's why I'm going to put this up in the attic and stop messing with it for a while. Because this is the second time, third time, second time I've tried to mess with the CPU and record a video like this to just kind of show my proof of concept worked. My chiller worked. This is a chiller I built out of an air conditioner and uh, we did it with uh, my 7820X, another eight core Intel processor, uh, but it was delitted. This has the best thermal transfer yet because it's uh, not as hot as the 7820X at all. Like uh, at 5.3 gigahertz, I can, with a normal AIO, be in like the 85-ish range where my uh, 4.8 gigahertz, my 7820X was getting up in the 100 degrees with certain coolers and stuff like that. So this thing's, you know, going to be a fun, this is my new GPU test bench. I was tired of messing with X299. It's slower for uh, eight cores. 9900K is just faster. It's a better system and it's soldered. So we were able to use this system semi-effectively uh, and, uh, and have it work, you know, because I, I got it up there. It was way below, you know, in decent temperature range and 5.5 gigahertz, you know, nothing to scoff at. But as things were, you know, it's just not a very good system. Uh, when you're extreme cooling, you need to like really extreme cool. Now I just watched a dude uh, that had one of those, um, it's like when you take the compressor for like the actual compressor fluid and put it to a block, I forget what that's called. It's like a phase change. It's, it's, you know, it, there's no fluid involved. He's actually, you know, the refrigerant is what cools the CPU. He has one of those. They're really hard to track down. They were a thing for extreme cooling before like LN2 became a real thing. You just can't buy them anymore. But he was getting them down to like 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees Celsius. And he got his up to 5.9. Uh, gigahertz. So uh, the fact that my CPU, uh, my fluid temperature is only at minus 30 uh, and then, you know, it has to deal with, you know, thermal transfer with uh, water block and stuff like that. It's just not able to do much more. So if this guy with a proper nine, minus 90 cooling solution can get to 5.9 gigahertz, the fact that I can even get to 5.5 you know, things are starting to make sense. This actually works very well for GPU cooling, and uh, I might keep it around for something like that in the future. Um, you know, do some extreme temperature GPU cooling because the GPU block is just such a big chunk of metal. It can, re like, it's also bad for it because it's really bad for condensation and stuff. But uh, I guess what I wanted to say is I'm gonna get this out of my room. I'm gonna get rid of the fluid that's in it. I'm finally going to uh, say goodbye to the chiller for a while and like put it in storage. But I mean, it works, but the whole concept is the problem. You can't, you know, e even if I have fluid here that's at like minus 30, I'm not getting the CPU down to minus 30, unfortunately. The best I can do under load is get it to like 60 degrees, uh, you know, which you know, for, for due to thermal transfer limitations, I'm going from a fluid to a piece of metal that's touching a piece of metal with some thermal paste that's then touching a CPU die through, you know, some solder. Like, look at that. We've got some crazy, you know, frost built up. And this is, I, I was really hoping to get like the, the CPU to maximum, you know, c coolage here, but it seems like at best, you know, at load, we can get her to like 60 degrees Celsius at a high overclock at 5.5 gigahertz. So, uh, my chilling situation is flawed and I know someone already did this before and there's a reason why no one's developed a chiller like this. Like you can hook up a fish tank chiller to something like this, but they're not going to get the, the temperature down to minus 30. They're, that's not what they're meant for at all. This 
the, as a proof of concept, the fluid gets down to minus 30, for God's sakes. And I think that's about as cold as you can get it. But getting that minus 30 to the CPU is just a problem, unfortunately. But we did a 9900K at 5.5 gigahertz at 1.5 volts. I think that's pretty good, actually, with LLC set to extreme. Uh, and the uncore, I think it was at 47. Uh, I was using uh, Dominator memory, 3200 megahertz. And I thought, well, I'll put my really high-end kit of, uh, some more trouble with the high-end kit of BDI 4233. Uh, uh, 66 or whatever it is. Ah, I'm rambling. So this is my video for today. The chiller is a complete and utter failure, unfortunately, mostly to do with its whole concept is no good. I need uh, some way to chill. Like you'd have to have to find some way of getting the actual like coolant to touch the CPU die to get it any lower. And I know there are ways to do that. Like you take a Freon cooler, like direct die or direct, uh, you know, IHS. There, there is systems like that. Maybe I'll, you know, if I could ever come into contact with one one day. Uh, but yeah, like this guy here, uh, I was like 4,000 subscribers, super cool uh, overclocking. That's the kind of stuff that I like. And you know, on day one coverage for the 9900K, he was getting like 5.9 gigahertz to run at Cinnamon Char 15. You know, so me getting any fur anywhere close to that is probably going to be impossible, unfortunately. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter, and I'll try and get some more videos done this week. I'm going to get this thing out of here. We're going to build my 9900K system in an NZXT uh, 710i, I believe. Yes, and uh, stick around on the channel. We're going to have some uh, case reviews, some component reviews some two CPU system reviews, some dual GPU, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna get rid of the chiller, and I got a meeting that I gotta be at like in 20 minutes, so I better turn the camera off. So I will see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, yeah, the chiller. Unfortunately, it can make snow pretty well, but when it comes down to cooling uh, a CPU, I need to get this off of there, it's gonna melt. Um, it's just, not the best concept, unfortunately, and that is the problem with this dang thing is, you know, as cold as I can get it, I can only get the CPU so cold, and that gets you an extra 200 megahertz. Is that worth it for 300 watts of power being sucked from the wall to ch chill the fluid? Probably not. <laughs> See you guys in another video. Thank you very much.